you had, if you absolutely do not know who Mario is by this point, hi, welcome to Planet Earth. I'm sorry, but yeah, Mario is just one of those big, big characters that pretty much all of us know from childhood. Whether we're talking about the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, or the 2010s, and even in the 2020s. He's just one of those staple characters that keeps, that just keeps reinventing itself. And now, we're suddenly seeing that, hey, Mario's getting a new, a new animated movie. Now, anyone who... Who is familiar with the uh, with the '90s film, the the Super Mario Brothers movie? Then you pretty much know that yeah, that was pretty much a cinematic disaster. Some of it is now some people do ironically praise it nowadays, but yeah, it didn't exactly make gangbusters and uh, it didn't exactly do so well financially. So now that uh, they now that Nintendo announced that they were officially going to be making an animated movie alongside Illumination, this got people curious. Was it going to be good? Or was it going to be terrible? I can safely report now, after having seen the movie and after letting it stew for a day, yeah, it, it did good. It was a good movie. So why did the critics dislike it? Well, first let me go through my points, and then we'll, I can explain in better detail what exactly happened. So, first off, uh, what is the story? Well, like I said, if you, if you know anything about Mario, then you know that this is, it's pretty much your standard, it, it's pretty much your standard story. You're, you're, it's basically the plot of the, of the most common Mario games condensed into a film. With a couple of details from the Super Mario Super Show. Yeah, back in like the 80s, there was a TV show called the Super Mario Super Show. And it was good. It was good. No one's going to deny it. Or at least it was decent for what was what was offered at the time. And yeah, that, that's basically the movie in this instance. Mario, as the brief description says, is a plumber from Brooklyn. An Italian-American plumber from Brooklyn. And it's just barely getting his job off the ground. Just, you know, a struggling, self-employed man, as they say. So he, su he then suddenly gets isekai over to the Mushroom Kingdom. And now has to save someone. Normally it's Princess Peach, but I think in this case they wanted to just, you know, mix things up a little. Instead, instead uh, during the war process... Uh, Mar uh, Luigi and Mario get separated, Luigi ends up in Bowser's Kingdom, Mario ends up in the Mushroom Kingdom, and now needs help from Princess Peach in order to save his, to save his brother. So yeah, that's, al that's already, a it's an interesting change, but not a fundamental one. And yeah, I guess the best way to describe the story overall is two things. One, it's brisk. It's really brisk. <laughs> It's really fast-paced, and according to uh, to the director, this was actually something that was intentional. Because what do you, what do so most people do after they complete a video game? They try to see if they can speed run it. Yeah, apparently the director wanted it to feel like a speed run, which yeah, I, I guess is an ins is an inspired decision. But I don't, I don't know. It just felt like you could have slowed down a little bit. You know, smell the roses. But, yeah, in, in some ways, it does kind of help, at least for this story, because then you get to see more stuff. You get to see more of the mushroom, of, you get to see more of the kingdoms. You get to see more spectacle. You, 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 get, you get more, as I guess. Uh, like, it doesn't waffle, but sometimes, you, it's sometimes a little bit of slowing down is necessary. So I guess it's safe to say it's more efficient storytelling. I don't know if that's the best way to put it, but you got it. And second off, and second off, I guess to say, it's very simple storytelling. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess uh, anyone like, if you know anything about storytelling, you know that the monomyth or the hero's journey, as established by Joseph Campbell, is one of the simplest is one of the simplest story structures that that is out there or at least the mob at least the foundation of one and 
yeah, you could argue that essentially what Mario's story is, is the hero's journey. That being, like, it's not much, but it works. Which, I guess, is the good way to say it. And I think that's also the best way to describe the characters. If, if you've played any of the games, then you kind of already have a good idea of the personalities of Mario, Luigi, Peach, Bowser, etc. You know? Mario is your fundamental, static, proactive, uh, proactive um, main protagonist. Luigi is your typical coward. Uh, Bowser is your hammy villain. And DK, well, is basically a monkey voiced by Seth Rogen. However, I guess in this instance, however, Peach is not the damsel in distress, rather more... I don't know, I guess a mentor slash companion in this one. And I will say this though, I, I don't know what the general recipe is for making a good, uh, a good strong female protagonist, but something tells me it involves Anya Taylor-Joy for some reason. Because that lady for some reason gets, uh, gets some of the good, char good female characters, I don't know how. But she does, she does. Anyways. Like I said, the, the characters are not that complex, but they are functional, which I guess, which, you know, which, you know, they're also recognizable from, you know, from their video game counterparts, which, you know, is going to satisfy the people that go to see the movie. Now, the, now in terms of animation, that's, um, it tends to be, it tends to be hit or miss, honestly. Like, it, it's a good... Like, it's good. Everything is visually stunning. Like, like everything. Like, not only is it detailed, but it's also very clear that... And it's very clear that a lot of the people knew what the style... They, they understood the assignment. They knew the style. They knew everything needed to be colorful. They knew everything needed to be vibrant. Everything needed to feel real. But, ev but also everything needed to feel like... Not, not so much a video game, but that the video game logic made sense like power-up boxes are just these giant containing boxes that are able to hold a whole bunch of other stuff like the power-ups are just appear naturally in nature or are things that are able to be crafted and stored into the power-up boxes that you know an entire kingdom of kongs has its own highway system and 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 that they can just craft craft cars out of out of machines or whatever, like, you, you get, that like they are able to just craft cars in, in a garage or whatever with just one machine, and that all the, it, it, like I said, they essentially find a way to make the video game logic make sense, which, yeah, again, it's, it's satisfying, but again, vis visually, everything is just amazing, it's, it's pretty much, imagine a, a Mario video game, but with the RTX cranked up to max, it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Now, from the now in terms of sound and music composition, I'll, I'll say this: this is where we start to hit some downgrades because for some reason, for some reason, they decided to add in some copyrighted music. Now, I am not against the use of copyrighted music in 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 films. However, one some of the music feels like it's just not well fitting. I think I I gotta know I gotta know. I'll, I'll explain later. And, and you know, I don't know. You'll 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 see it when you see the movie. But also some of it has already been overused. Like if you're gonna use copyrighted music, maybe use less no well known copyrighted music or look for something that is a lot more. How do I say this? It just fits better. I suppose. Like, I don't know. There, there, there's one, um... Like, I don't know. There, there, there's, you know, like, the, in the montage where Mario is practicing and trying to get used to the physics of this world through the, through the, through the little, uh, tutorial course, um, they used I Need a Hero, which, you know, if you've seen Trek 2, you know, hey, it's not a bad song. It's a great song. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I would have used Fort Minor. But that's just because I grew up, you know, with that song blaring in the high school gym. All right, that 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 that's just a me thing. 
I don't know, maybe, maybe make it make an 8-bit rendition. But a lot of the but a lot of the music that uh, that appeared in, the, but a lot of the orchestras, the, a lot of the, a lot of the orchestral scores, those are based off more off the, the those are based off of the original Mario music for the uh, for the for Nintendo for the Nintendo Entertainment System. That that actually. Like they, they they managed to find a way to blend the score in with the rest of the with the with the, with the rest of the movie. It's actually it's quite impressive, quite impressive how they do that. Also, Bowser has a song named Peaches. I'm gonna shut up on that. Bob, uh, you guys have probably already heard it online, but yeah, it's just one of those hammy songs that's yeah only Jack Black can deliver something like that. Where he is the villain, but this, he, he he plays the hammy villain pretty well. Yeah, like most of the characters. Yeah, outside of that, all like all the characters fit well except for Seth Rogen. But then again, if if you're gonna play Seth Rogen, for, if Seth Rogen's gonna play anything, it it better be a monkey. Like the laugh actually fits well, but at the same time, you know it's Seth Rogen. As uh, that that the one voice actor that everyone was worried about was of course. The titular character uh, Mario, played by Chris Pratt, and I can go ahead and and I can say this with confidence, he plays the role well, like surprisingly well. I, I guess because we got the we got the first take uh, take when uh, when the original trailer out came out when the original trailer came out, we got the first take from Chris Pratt, so it didn't sound as well defined, but. I don't know, I guess Chris Pat got more practice, he started to do the accent a lot better, and yeah, you can barely tell it's him. He did a really good job. So overall, I'll say that it's a good movie. Not It could have been better, but it, it is good. And here's the part where I address the disconnect between critics and the audience. And it's necessary to address it because... Critics are not trying to beat to dump on this film, and and I can sort of understand it. But at the same time, it's not like gamers are just blind nostalgic freaks. They're just we we've been critical. Of, if if anything, we've been the most critical about video game adaptations for the longest time now. I mean, we we basically, I mean, whether we're talking about whether we're talking about the Mortal Kombat movie or the Uncharted movie or the Sonic movie, or the Tomb Raider movies, we've been the most critical. So, how come this one is suddenly surpassing Frozen 2 for the most well-received animated movie? Well, here's the thing. And it's, it's, here's the thing about Disconnect. Here's where I get into the Disconnect. Critics, when they, when they were criticizing the movie, they were not criticizing it as a video game adaptation. They were criticizing it as an animated film. And what a critic's job is, or at least what most critics' jobs are, is that, that what they're looking for is a film that elevates the art that they're critiquing. So when it comes to animated movies, they're going to be looking for... They're going to be looking for movies that raise the skills of the animators. They're looking for something that raises the skill of... The of the screenwriters, they're looking for movies where it raises the skills of the voice actors. They're looking for something that raises the skills of of the composers. They're looking for something that gets people to push them to their limit, to get them to see what stories can they, what stories can they tell, what plot twists can they bring, what actors are willing to twist their tongues to. To, you know, to, to do better. To do better. That is ultimately the critic's job. They want to see the art form advance. And that's and with uh, with movies coming up like Across the Spider-Verse and with more recent films like like the like uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio or Puss in Boots' The Last Wish, it's very clear that people wanted to... That, uh, that, that it's very clear that they wanted... Uh, that they want the medium of animation to be pushed, to be elevated, 
to use the um, to use the best that they can. That's what's going to give them. That's what's going to give them the best scores from them. However, for the gamers of the audience, for for the general audience, they're they're looking for something a little bit more functional. Is this store? Is this going to be worth my money? Is this going to be? Is is this is the story going to be great? Are they going to honor the legacy the, of the, the? Are they going to honor the franchise that is? That is the Super Mario franchise. Are they going to crap all over it? Or are they going to... You know... Are, are they going to be able to capture the moments of the childhood? I guess if I were to compare it in another way... It's like if you have a story about a historical event... And from a... And from a history bus perspective... Does the film do a good job? Does the... Does the by does the uh, does the biopic does the biography does the does the historical film cover the history as well as it should? I guess it's one way. I, I guess a better comparison would be, of course, uh, food critics. Food critics are always looking for people who are pushing the art, who are pushing culinary art to its absolute limit, who are raising the bar when it comes to f when when it comes to cooking. You know. Raising the culinary arts. That that's the stuff that gets Michelin stars. Now, and and I'm just taking a hypothetical out of nowhere. If someone was to say, rec, if a, if a, if a critic was to recommend a restaurant around Anaheim, they'd probably they'd probably take you to their personal blog. They'd probably tell you what this restaurant does well with with uh with Japanese food. What this restaurant does well with, uh, with, with French cuisine, what this restaurant does well with Indian food, etc., etc. They they'd have an entire full palette. For me, if you asked me what I would recommend, if I if I was telling you where to go eat in Anaheim, I'd probably tell you to go to Mostos. That is essentially a Japanese fast food restaurant run by Mexicans. Why? Because they have some pretty big, some pretty big portions. The food's cooked well, and and you know you get you get the best bang for your buck. Again, I'm not knocking food critics, but that is where I would recommend you guys go because for me, for what for what it is, that's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. I guess to, to put it simply, uh, the Mario movie. If you were to compare it for the food, is basically a bowl of spaghetti. It's well made. It's very hard to screw it up, and frankly, it, it is gonna fill you. And it's made with love. Now, a critic will tell you that it's you know that's simple. It's bland. It's not necessarily something that is elevating culinary art, but it is good food. And I think that's ultimately what we were all looking for. Especially when most recent offerings were kind of a slop. So good, so good a spaghetti is very much welcome. Ah oh, crap! When did my air Italian come out? Then again, my last name is Italian, so probably shouldn't be that hung up about it. So overall, my score would have to be a 3.9. If you know my grading. Uh, 3.9 out of 5. If you know my grading skill, you know that is a very good, very good, that, that is a very good score. It basically means it might not be for everyone, but it's definitely for the gamers out there. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely a movie that respects, uh, Mario as a, as a franchise that understands that this is the hero that we all know and love. And... That's really all I got. Uh, that's really all I got to say about it. Uh, yeah, so that's my first video of the year. Probably not a good thing. Problem is that I've been a little busy with the project, and if you've been on Twitter lately, you'd know that I'd uh, that I'd basically been looking for uh, people to help me out in this project. Only problem is uh, I didn't expect too many people to. Uh, I didn't expect too many people to um, to sign up. Now I got to go through and filter the list to decide on. I was hoping one or two people. I didn't think a lot of artists were gonna help, were willing to, you know, 
were willing to participate. But hey, that's that's advertisement for you. It worked. So yeah, that's all I really got for you guys. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, you guys uh, like? Uh, did you guys like the movie? Did you guys dislike the movie? Uh, try not to give too many spoilers unless it's very well beyond it. But, uh, yeah, that's all I really got for you guys today. And until then, this is me saying, thank you for being smart. Sorry not.